okay? A finite volume scheme is discreetly conservative. That's another nice property uh, that motivates why people use finite volume scheme, even in cases where you don't expect a shock wave is that when discrete conservation, when, when the conservation property matters very much, right? Uh, for example, one of the things, one of the applications is in when people are modeling the flow in gas turbine engines. They care very much that the flow that enters the gas turbine engine is actually the same, precisely the flow that goes through every stage. Because if you make a small error to be so that the flow is not conservative in modeling every stage, the error may accumulate and the outflow you get may be completely different from the inflow you get. And the physics may be very different. So, so they, they care about conservation properties very much. Of course, we, we know by physics that whatever flow that comes in has to go, has to go out, right? But if you approximate the flow using finite difference methods, Maybe that is going to be making you are going to be making some error in that, and that error, if accumulates over multiple components, may become a big error. So in this case, it's when people care about satisfying the conservative properties numerically, they use finite volume schemes because this flux reconstruction is applied both for DDT of UI and also for DDT of UI minus one, right? The same reconstructed flux is used for the DDT of the left interface and the right interface, and for the, uh, for the left uh, cell and the right cell. And for the right cell, we have a positive contribution, and on the left cell, we have a negative contribution. So even though you make a numerical error in this approximation, the error is going to cancel out because the contribution of the error is positive to one side of the control to one side of the interface and negative on the other side of the interface. So the overall effect, the uh, if you only care about the total, the total amount of u, the summation of the integral of u you are making zero error, okay? So even though, for example, if you solve a finite volume scheme, even though the distribution of U may be different from the actual physics, but the overall integral is going to be exactly the same. So you would make no error in conservation. In, another, in other words, the DDT of the summation of UI times delta XI is going to be what? It's going to be the summation. Oh, I think I forgot uh, divided by delta xi here, right? So because I divided by delta xi here, I should also divide by delta X, xi here. So, so the DDT of the summation of ui times delta xi is equal to the summation over i of, now I have this delta xi, so this delta xi cancels f. Uh, let me write a shorthand as uh, f i minus one, f i plus one to be to be f of u at x i minus one and f of u at x i plus one. So f uh, summation over i of f i minus half minus f i plus half, and all of these cancel except for the very first one. So the first one is f half minus f of m plus half. Right, all the interior Fs cancel. So I'm not really making any error in the total amount of conserved quantity. Right? Um, the only if if I if these Fs are given by boundary conditions, then I'm making zero error. If the Fs are also approximated at the boundaries, then the amount of error I make in the integral is only contributed from the amount of error I make on the boundaries, on the boundary of the entire domain, not on the boundary of the individual small cells. Okay, does it make, does it make sense? So that means finite volume is discreetly conservative. Okay, so we see 
two motivations for using finite volume. One is discontinuity and two is discrete conservation. 